Okay, we are live. Hello, everyone. Sometimes Hi. it takes a couple of seconds for YouTube to see that we're live. <laughs> <laughs> so give it a couple of seconds. Hello. We're going to be talking about our book club pick. Um, it is going to be for our Teacups and Murder book club. We read No Good Tea Goes Unpunished by Brie Baker. But if you're joining us and you didn't read it, that's fine too. We're just going to talk about like all things cozy. So I'll let Courtney start by... Courtney, <laughs> Start by introducing herself. Hi, I'm Courtney from Courtagonist is my channel, and I do predominantly cozy mysteries, but I also read a lot of thrillers, sci-fi, fantasies, all that different kind of stuff. Yeah, and she's Bye. awesome. <laughs> yeah, she's awesome. What did you rate the book, Courtney? Oh, yes, I rated it four stars. I thought it was a solid, a, a solid cozy. Was this the first, now this is book two in the series. Is this the first book that you have read as in the series or did you read the first one? No, I did not read the first one, which made me nervous because normally like I do start from mm -hmm. it, but I feel like the author did an amazing job with referencing back to the first book and like what yeah. happened with that. So I didn't feel as lost as I normally would have. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, everybody. I'm Spencer, um, and I'm the other half of the uh, co-host for Teacups and Murder. Uh, my YouTube channel and my Instagram is Intentionally Bookish. I also post, obviously, bookish content uh, focused heavily on cozies, of course, uh, romance. But like Courtney, I love other genres, too. Um, thrillers are really my jam, crime fiction some fantasy maybe um but mostly mostly cozy's romance and thrillers and so i gave this one a four i also thought it was really solid um <clears throat> i did read the first one and i actually gave that one five stars which mm -hmm. it was so good that's why i kind of pushed for us to read the second one this time around i had my own personal agenda um but yeah i really liked it <laughs> okay cool so we have a lot of four stars a lot of 3.5 three mm -hmm. stars not too bad not too bad okay um uh, hi i'm samantha from books with samantha i read predominantly romances and cozy mysteries i'm really excited for this cozy mystery book club i gave this one four stars as well so we all kind of rated it the same i didn't read the first one so i was kind of nervous because i normally read books in like the series that the author gives us uh but I felt like I fully understood everything that was going on I didn't feel like I was missing like any pieces to the story or to the characters so yeah a solid four star read for me I think I like this one a little bit better than the Amanda Flower one we read a couple months ago I think yes. I gave that one four stars too but I don't yes. know this is a better a four different kind of four stars no I I totally understand yeah. what you're saying I if you guys were here for the last one, I did not love our last one as much as mm -hmm. Sam did, but I really, I really like this one. Um, like I said, I gave the first one five stars. I did listen to both the first and this one on audiobook, and um, I thought it was great. I thought the narration was really good. Um, I know one of my complaints for the last book was I think the audio was a detriment, whereas this time around was totally the opposite. I think that the audio really enhanced um, the reading experience with the different accents. And, I was gonna say, did um, they have all of the accents that like I was envisioning in my mind? Cause I read it on Kindle. So mm -hmm, I of mm -hmm. course put like my Oklahoma twang on like mm -hmm, every mm -hmm. single one of the accents. Yeah, it, there was a twang there. Now I, I hate to keep comparing it. Southern twang to it. Yeah. yeah, but not too much. Like I hate to keep comparing it to the book that the Amanda Flowers mm -hmm. book that we read last time, but that one I felt was a little too southern whereas because i've lived in the south so like i'm used to hearing the different accents i think this one was a lot more um a lot more realistic not too over the top and it, it really did like set the scene for sure i completely agree i think this was one of the best audiobooks i've read for a cozy mystery i think the narrator was fantastic i originally was reading this like physically and i got like a hundred pages in and i switched to the audiobook and i never went back to the physical book because i think the narrator was so good she had like the british accent for the girl in the character yeah. in the book she had like a southern twang it was she did a really good job but it wasn't like obnoxious you know what i mean mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. And the yeah. pacing was really good. I listened to it on two point speed on Hoopla. And sometimes yeah. when people do accents on Hoopla, like 
you can't go too fast. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the pacing was really good as well. Yeah, I listened on Scribd at uh, 1.2, like 1.3, whatever that between 1.1 and 1.5. And I thought it was um, just right, just because I always have to focus. But I'm with you, Sam. I think that this is one of the best cozy narrations, because as much as I love cozies, weirdly enough, I'm very picky about which cozies I listen to an audiobook, because mm -hmm. I feel like the narration can really make or break. And with cozies, like you really want to absorb yourself in the world mm -hmm. because of the different like subject matters. And if the audio is not right, I it will affect the reading experience for me. Like I can't separate the two. And so the fact that this one was so good, I was very relieved about. <laughs> was because... it the same audiobook narrator as the first one? Yes. Which oh, is... okay. Awesome. That's really nice because like <laughs> I listened to the Murder She Wrote books on audio, like mm -hmm. I devour them that way. Mm -hmm. And like midway through, they changed. Did they change? audiobook narrators Can't pee. and like it doesn't sound like her like yeah. I like it just it and then it throws me off and then I'm like I don't want it anymore you can't yeah yeah and one of the books that one of the series that does this that kills me is the bake shop mystery series court I don't know if you've ever listened no, to those I've never listened to them okay I'm well don't see it's a travesty <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the books so, are so good. Yeah. Such a narrator, you get so used to how Jules and her mom speak, yes. and then like book four, they change the narrator, and I and hate. The accents. And I the accents. hate yeah. the way she talks for Carlos. Like it drives me bananas. That's, Carlos, <laughs> okay, like, so I Carlos is just want to buy the narration of like like book four and book five just so I can like hear the difference oh like, you oh you can hear it because it's not yeah, just the it, person it. it's the accents because no no you that's my Carlos, favorite cozy mystery series the mom I, changes for uh, me and that like the mom goes from how i envisioned her when i read the book which, yeah because helen whatever is like, but cozy, then she, lovey yeah she turns into like almost like a bobby's world don't China. like i can't even i don't even want to try to They're describe it but Awesome. Anyway, so I had to get over it because, you know, we love this series, but yes. just a heads up for folks. So that said, this one, at least for book two, I haven't read beyond uh, the book we're talking about today, but the first two are the same. And again, she does a really great job establishing the different characters. There is a, a British character and like, yeah, she does a great job. Yeah. Um, so some people are saying that this was their first cozy mystery, which is so exciting. Yay! <laughs> Um, well, I do think as a romance reader, this was a very good cozy mystery because yes, there was I a little bit of a romance going on, a little yeah. bit of a love triangle. Well, I would yes. say that Brie Baker, Julianne Lindsay is very, very, very good at She's writing. a romance author as well, yeah. actually. Yeah, um, but like really? all of her cozy mysteries, mm -hmm. like I'm like, does this have to be closed door? Like, could you just like do like a, a mixture of romance and cozy mm -hmm. mystery and still have open door. I'd, I'd be happy with that. Thank you. Right. Like yeah. a happy blend. Yeah. She actually, Oh, I don't want to misspeak, but I feel like she's actually written Harlequins maybe in yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. under Julianne Lindsay. She has written romance and still writes romance. Mm -hmm. um, so that's probably why this is a perfect gateway cozy for romance readers because yeah. she handles it with such authority since obviously she does write romance. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people saying are saying that it is the same narrator throughout the entire thing okay. um, and that it continues to be really good. So uh, yeah. let's talk about the actual plot real quick. We got to just jump right in. Oh yes. Yes. <laughs> Okay. So, she follows our main character. She lives, her name is Everly. She owns like this tea shop, which is a really cool concept. And she is uh, catering for one of her childhood friends' wedding. And at this wedding, the groom ends up dying and he's quite well off. And the wife is like seen holding the cake knife that he was stabbed with. So, everyone is kind of like pointing the eye towards her. So, she's trying to like help her best friend clear her name and she She's working with like the local detective to like figure out what's going on. So, yep, perfectly. I, mean, <laughs> okay, I think that's the sum of uh, this. Yes. One. Okay. Did anybody else get practical magic vibes from this whole entire plot? Yes. 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 Like literally, my favorite movie of all time. 
of all time. I love this movie more than anything. And then the whole <laughs> entire time, like little things would pop. Like she doesn't have a sister, but like her aunts live in their old house and their their family is that hers. oh I, I love. love the aunts. Yeah. And then I was yeah. just like, like every time like something new would pop up, I was like, practical magic, practical magic. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. why I devoured it in two days. Yeah. It's so funny that you say that. So interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bye, Spencer. Oh, I was just going to say, it's so funny that you said that because literally as I was listening to the audio book, the scenes that she was with her aunts at their house or her childhood home, I'm like, oh my gosh, I really want to watch, rewatch Practical Magic. And like, I have it queued up on my well, like, Practical- Apple TV to watch. Didn't they have, so like in the book, they had midnight pancakes instead of yes. midnight margaritas. Yes. And I was like, I want to do that. Yeah. That's such yes. a charming thing. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yeah, someone says go for the whole series. It kind of continues with that theme. That's so good to hear. Yeah, See, yeah. with the Amanda Flower book, I hate comparing, but like I feel like I was solid reading that b- one book and like maybe not continuing with the series. But this one, I'm like, I have to finish it. Like I have yeah. to keep going. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's I agree. Like anything Julie, Julie and Lindsay Brie Baker writes. I I devour I'm devouring, like I'm going through her whole entire catalog and devouring everything. Like if oh, you want nice. this, do the Apple Cider series that she has. I have two of those books and I still I oh, have to read it this fall. Oh my fall. god, they I are know. so good. And if you want like, <laughs> a good romance within a cozy mystery, mm. you have to read the the Apple Cider uh series. Mm-hmm. It's so good. Yes, mm. I love it. The only reason I didn't give it five stars is I do feel like there was too much going on with the side characters. Like there was the little library, there was the tea shop, there was the kooky mm-hmm. ants with the bee film. Like I feel mm-hmm. like this book, I very rarely say this, but I feel like we could have mm-hmm. gotten like another hundred pages just mm-hmm. with the bees or just with the library. Cause mm-hmm. it was just like thrown, it was a lot. All the characters yeah. had a lot going on. Well, so, and so- I, I feel like the, the, person who actually ended up doing the murder was barely on the page so then yeah. how were you supposed to do a lot of the connections that mm-hmm. they it, like I feel like that person was on my list but mm-hmm. I didn't actually like go oh that's who it is because normally mm-hmm. I figure it out at like 70 percent mm-hmm. mm-hmm. but I was yeah I was a little thrown off yeah so 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 it's funny because when I read cozies I probably have said this a million times but when I read cozies I don't even try to f- figure it out. Like I'll have just like guesses in a very joking way, but I love the getting there more than like thinking mm-hmm. that I'm right. So I jokingly kind of guessed, but I had, I can never rationalize like the motive or anything, but in terms of the side characters, like I loved the reporter. Like I know oh, yeah, that Ryan. I, like I thought, and especially like he was just so witty and like they're back and forth. I was really hoping that it wasn't him because let's be honest, when it comes to cozies, more often than not, the killer ends up being the person who's not part of the town. Like it's always the outsider or whatever. And since oh, he's right. not at least up until this point, again, I haven't read the rest of the series, but up until this point, he's not a regular cast member. And so I'm like, oh man, is it going to be him because he's new in town? I hope not because I really love him and whatever. But I I know what you mean about having a lot of moving pieces, Sam with like the aunts and the Mm -hmm. best friend. But like weirdly enough, that's why I loved it because my favorite cozies are the ones where I'm like, a murder doesn't even have to happen. I just want to like follow you around town because it's like so interesting to follow the aunts and hang out with the friend um, because the friend did the way, well, so the first book, and I'm not giving anything away, but the friend mm-hmm. is in the first book as well. So I feel like, <clears throat> excuse me, she's always there as kind of like her, not necessarily as like sidekick, but sounding board. Mm-hmm. Um, I like so I, yeah, I didn't mind her in there because I knew that she really wasn't going to be like in the way, I guess. Um, but yeah, the, the reporter, like I, he was my jam. I just thought that the banter between them was, was so funny and he challenged her. Um, Oh, awesome. Yeah. So if he sticks around, I'm totally fine with that. Like yeah. I thought it was well, so Ryan, fun. There wasn't ever a point that I thought it was him to be honest. Cause okay. I just, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, he's just seemed like this like charismatic, like funny characters, not necessarily one that would have murdered someone. But right. okay, who did we before we say who the murderer is, who did we think it was? I mean, 
I feel like everything was pointing towards Jasper. So maybe at first I was like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, makes sense. Cause like he's conveniently gone every single time something happens. But then I'm like, because that's the most obvious thing. Mm -hmm. Like it's yeah. probably not him. So yeah. Courtney, what did you think it was at first? Did you at think first, it was the person? I no, I thought it was, I thought it was probably Pete. I feel oh, like he, his business partner because yeah. it seemed like was it Craig? Was that was that the the, the grooms? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure. So like I feel like Craig was like pushing him out of the business, like because he wasn't really doing much. He wasn't like doing all of the technical things. Yeah. So I feel yep. like him getting mm -hmm. married, like he was now an adult and he was going to be pushing his friend aside. And so I mm -hmm. thought that he, in the end, had done the killing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was him. And then I thought, so it's funny because at first I thought it was the mistress because, mm -hmm. but for the, but then I discounted her for the same reason you discounted Ryan, because I'm like, that's way too obvious yeah. um, because the only motive I can think of is a jilted mistress. And then I thought it was, um, um, God, Pete, because of what you just said. Um, and I, I always try and like, think like okay well that kind of makes sense but I, again mm -hmm. i'm terrible with motives <laughs> so when i found out who it was and why um i have to be honest it was a little like uh okay but that mm -hmm. didn't to, to me take away but because no. again for me cozies aren't actually about the mystery but more so just like the happenings are going on so um mm -hmm. i was fine with it at the end yeah, I don't, I didn't initially think it was the mistress just because for me personally, I don't like the like plot of a woman scorned. You know what I mean? Same. Like it's the women being the villain mm -hmm. and the mistress and like, you know, pitting them against each other. Like, yeah. I don't like that type of yeah. plot. But yeah. I will say, okay, well, I guess we're just going to spoil it. Sorry for anyone who hasn't read it. It was the mistress. <laughs> I would say, even though she technically was like a woman scorned, it wasn't like, I don't know how to say it. She was the villain, but she wasn't villainized for just being a woman. Does that make sense? Like, I feel yeah, like the author no. did a good job in that. Well, yeah. I think the author did a really good job at, like, showing just how unhinged she was when they went back yes. to, like, her priors. Like, when yes. Grady went back and, like, looked at her up and she had multiple um, restraining orders from mm -hmm. multiple men that she dated mm -hmm. and uh, including Craig and, like, all of this stuff. I was like, okay. That mm -hmm. makes a little bit more sense. I would have liked a little bit more hints dropped. Like yes. even from even from his wife, like the the new widow. Uh -huh. I feel like if she would have dropped even a little bit more hints about yeah. the ex during yeah. her and Everly's like one on ones, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been so like, huh? Oh, okay. Whatever yeah. Yeah. It did come out and happen. Yeah, I agree because I feel like she held it together too well for her to totally be unhinged at the end. Yeah. Right. I think if she would, and and I, I will say, I do like how the author played it out because up until the end, you think that both the husband and the mistress were in it together. And, mm -hmm. and while I was reading the book, I was really miffed because why I was thinking, why is no one giving, even though he's dead, why is no one giving Craig grief? Because he cheated, you know, whatever. And then obviously at the end you find out like, okay, well that wasn't really the case. Yeah. But I feel like there, again, like you were saying, Courtney, the, the, um, I keep forgetting her name, but the friend or the new wife should have known mm -hmm. like, okay, well, there's this woman who keeps coming around or mm -hmm. I've seen her before or whatever. And for the woman to have been so, I don't know. I just think she played it really, really well. And like Everly felt bad for her at some mm -hmm. point because she held it together. And then all of a sudden her monologue at the end was just like tirade i'm like okay well yeah it's really coming out now with the bracelet and everything yeah yeah so it that although i didn't mind the reveal and i felt like it kind of tied all the loose ends at the end of mm -hmm. the book i wasn't left with any questions mm -hmm. it was just a little missing piece that like prevented me from giving it a full like five star mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. loved the majority of this book oh same oh same. yeah oh yeah now i'm looking at my notes there is one thing that okay so it's funny because i i love this book but there were two like main gripes that i had mm -hmm. um 
and it, I just thought about this because we were talking about who we thought the murderer was for a split second. I actually thought it was Judy, the, the bride, only because okay. she came across so what's the term? Is it Mary Sue where you're like super um, like I don't even like very incompetent and like mm -hmm. feeble minded. There it is. Because um, she kept like letting Jasper, is it Jasper? She yeah, kept, Jasper like, letting Jasper. Her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, she must be hamming it up as being incapable because she did it. Obviously, she didn't do it. Um, but reading it for till a certain point, I was I was actually kind of annoyed by her because it was just I so was like whimpery and I had to step back because I'm like, okay, well, she is a widow. But at the same time, I feel like she might have been able to be written a little bit better to where you felt you felt empathy for her, but at the same time, yeah. not like put off because yeah, I feel like, it was a little whiny. I feel like she should have come off as more numb and yes. like um, not like a damsel in distress kind of yeah. way that had Jasper come and save her. I feel like yeah. if she had been more numb or non uh, non pulsed or like yeah non yeah yeah mm -hmm. like i feel like that would have been a lot more believable um yeah. it was also very very hard for me because they had only been together like six months before they got married and mm -hmm. so like i was also that in m my mind i'm like i'm like it's been six months like yes i can understand you being very upset about losing mm -hmm. him and everything but i was also like how well did you know him? Mm -hmm. Like, are you sure? Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I thought it was very weird, like, that she really didn't give us information about him. You know, like, mm -hmm. he never, like, she wanted to keep the fact that he was cheating a secret when that's like a, that's something that could have helped the detective. Mm -hmm. Like, she never talked about, like, his business partner or his business mm -hmm. or, like, this is the last mm -hmm. person he called. This is his phone mm -hmm. password. Like, literally was doing nothing mm -hmm. to find the murderer of her husband like that was the only yeah. thing that confused me and there was like a very brief point where i was like maybe she found out about the cheating scandal and it was her and jasper mm -hmm. together like, yes. yes because because yeah. why would jasper it bothered me so much that she was allowing him to be there for her in that just, way like, stay yeah. by her side like yeah. like I, that was I think that was one of the one the one of the things that like annoyed me the most the whole entire yeah. book I'm like just go away you're not even adding to the plot go away I don't like right. you I'm like what was the resolution he just disappeared like she decided yeah. he was gonna live outside of the town and he never came back mm -mm. yeah yeah and it's like if it was yeah. as easy as you just letting him know like hey we're not going to be together anymore why didn't you say that before like i feel as if she sent him totally mixed signals like was he creepy what? and all that yes but at the same time it was on her to say explicitly mm -hmm. no i'm good i have my best friend the heroine of the book to be my my shoulder to lean on i don't need my ex that we dated for two weeks in, in high school. In high school. And we slept like in the same room on the same couch together, like cuddling. I was like, what? What is this? I don't like this. So that's why I thought it was Jasper for like the longest time. But I was like, it's mm -hmm. too obvious. Like mm -hmm. he's always not there when the murder happens. Like I feel like yeah. they want us to think it's Jasper. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm not the only one who thought they did it together. Yeah. yeah that yeah, was that first. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, a prenup. That's not even totally yeah. talked about. Yeah, yeah. I thought about that, too. <laughs> yeah, so, six months here. Have all of my millions. Right, yeah. right. Exactly. And then at the end, I know I'm harping on this a lot, but there's yeah. not that much to harp on. But at the end, all of a sudden, she, like, got her wits about her. And she's like, oh, I'm going to work together with um, Pete and, we're, and, you know, just run a uh, uh -huh. biomedical company like yeah what <laughs> yeah, but all of a sudden like you were like known before yeah, yeah. especially because he was known as this genius like how are you running the company without him that was yeah there was some loose ends when it came to her i didn't mm -hmm. feel bad for her that was like the thing about the book was i did not feel yeah. bad for the wife yeah. yeah yeah i think that like if if it had been like a long love story of like trials and tribulations that they just mm -hmm. and then she lost him and everything i think i would have felt a little bit more compassion towards mm -hmm. judy but it was more like i just really want to follow around Eppley and see mm -hmm. what's going on in town and then figure it out like yeah that's, 
Yeah. That's what I really care about. <laughs> so, okay. So speaking of Everly, um, obviously when it comes to cozies, the amateur sleuth has to like go digging around and like mm -hmm. ask questions to whatever. And I always feel like a really well done cozy, it really hinges on how well they can get away with investigating without coming off as like obnoxious or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think that Everly did a really good job at that, um, especially since she's technically new back in town. Like she had grown up there and then moved away and then moved back, whatever. But there were two moments that I was a little like put off by. And so I just have to mention them really quickly because one of them really stood out in my mind. So the scene toward the end where she's in the house and she hears, um, she hears Ryan's phone ringing and she's on the phone with the detective and he's like, don't go outside. Right. And she's like, Oh no, I'm going to go see and talk to him and figure it all. And she goes outside anyway. It reminds me of the scene from scream where Drew Barrymore goes outside and is like on the phone looking around and you can hear the detective on the phone, like get your ass back in the house. Mm -hmm. I wanted to like, if I had a physical copy of the book, I would have thrown it across the room. Because yeah. I kind of like, wanted to be like, you deserved getting hit by that driftwood. Like <laughs> girl, get him. <laughs> the same thing when she went into the dark, alley knowing that he was already on his way i was like come on yeah yeah he had the most patience i could ever imagine a detective had. yes and so that was one of the things that so i will say that's one of the things that the audiobook did really well is convey his frustration because he was like there's there's dialogue between them of him telling her to get back inside or whatever and like the aud the narrator does a really good job of being like get inside <laughs> and i'm like yeah. Carl, get back inside. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what character that I had no idea like who she was? Who is is it a nanny they have for their son? Yes, right? It's a yeah. nanny. An oh, yeah. care. Okay. I was like, who is this? Who is this girl? Like who is yeah, this? so she's introduced in the first book. Um, and they they gloss over it very briefly in the second book, but basically, um, obviously there's kind of sparks between her and the sheriff or whatever. And in the first book, she thinks like the nanny is with him and then discovers it's the, it's, she's a nanny and not actually a significant other. And so I like that they okay. squash that right away. So there's no like female pitting against mm -hmm. each other or yeah. anything like that. Um, Cause when they see each other again, the nanny's like, Oh, Hey, how are you? That kind of thing, which is really touching. Yeah. The nanny's hired by his ex mother-in-law. Yes. And Who speaking of, editor. I cannot wait until, like, the book ended with me wanting to read the next one because the mother-in-law is going to be involved and the aunt. And I'm like, oh, I just wanted to start right away. Like, I can't <laughs> wait until, until the aunt and the mother-in-law, like, go at go it. And I'm just, mm -hmm. oh, like, I'm just living, living yeah. for that. Yeah. And I like how she, the little hint she had at the end, how Christmas was like different or special, like on the island or whatever. And I was like, oh, I can't wait. Like that sounds yeah. really fun. It is interesting. They're skipping from summer to Christmas though. Is Christmas the next one? I don't know if Christmas is the next one, but I literally just posted on my Facebook. I'm going to look it up right now. I just posted on my Facebook how I really wish it was Christmas right now. And then all <laughs> of my friends are like Courtney. And I'm like, no, come at me, bro. I, <laughs> like slowly skip over fall. Yeah. I was like, well, if I it is need... Christmas, I'm gonna have to wait to read I'm it. Like, then. <laughs> I just need Christmas. Like I, I am the person in the summer because fall and Christmas cozies to me are like far superior to summer. Cozies. Oh, I mean they're quintessential. The cozy <laughs> they put the cozy and cozy mystery, mm -hmm. and so. Mm -hmm. But I'm a very seasonal reader, so like no matter how much I'm chomping at the bit, I have to put it off. Like that's why last summer when I read the first one, I'm like guess I'm going to have to wait a whole nother year to read the no. second book. <laughs> the third <laughs> one is Christmas, by the way. Oh, so they okay. do skip from summer to Christmas. That's I interesting. am so excited. There is a little Christmas tree and the oh, that's pelican adorable. bird is wearing a Christmas hat. Lou, oh, I whatever. love him. Okay, so speaking of magical stuff, I so the first book she kind of talks to him and it just seems like a fun, quirky thing. But I feel like in this book, it's a little bit more like familiar 
as in like which is familiar. Yeah, I, know she's I got like a little bit more witch, magical yeah. vibes. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, this is fun because like a random seagull is it's so much. I mean, yes, there's a cat, but it's so much more different than like a cat or a dog or something yep. like that. I love no, Blue so much. I, <laughs> she was great. I was living a hundred percent for it. I'm yeah. looking it up right now. That is so. Yeah, funny. it's called Tide and Punishment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. it was, I'm gonna have to buy this series just to have it on my I'm, show. Yeah, I'm just gonna I buy love it. it. God, like, this book is like, right cute. there. Oh, yeah. it's so cute. oh that that's adorable. Cute. That is cute. Okay, cool. I wonder how many books are in this. It's short. I think on, it ended. Um, on Goodreads it says seven. Oh, that's oh, not that bad. kills me. I'm one who loves my series like stupid long, but I think it's actually I yeah, think like it actually ended. Ended. Yeah, the last one was written. It says the final, the final book was. It came out March 29th of this year. Oh, okay. I mean, at least it ended though, instead of just kind of dropping. But hopefully, off, so. it ended well because, like, I've read. There's one of Ellery Adams series, and then one of Ellie Alexander's series that their series did not get continued with the publishing house, mm -hmm. and then they had mm -hmm. to in one of them's with Ellery's, she had to kill off some people and it literally oh. broke my heart and I died like I cried as though someone in my actual life died yeah and like, I, would I threw too. the book down I was oh, not okay no. I was not okay I messaged her immediately and I was like <laughs> I go Ellery because I'm friends with her and I was like what did you do to me oh my goes, gosh I am so sorry she goes this series was not getting picked up anymore and I wanted to end it the way I wanted to end it that's fair and that's I was fair. like okay I get it I said but my heart I said I've yeah. broken blood vessels on my face I've cried so hard <laughs> oh my God. I, like, I am personally attacked like I still get like I'm getting chills just thinking about like the last book of that series and then like <sighs> Ellie's uh beer series did not get um, picked back up it didn't and it did not the Sloan Krause yeah, that's yeah. yeah, I was super, super upset about that one. And so it like finished really, really quickly. And so I messaged her and I was like, hey, I love all of your writing, mm -hmm. but what happened? And she was like, it didn't get picked back up. Now she she has written like a novella now, mm -hmm. like uh, mm -hmm. that she started with her own um, writing house that she started up. Right. And so I can get still get a little bit of Garrett and Sloan, but yeah. Yeah, because she has a novella that's like, in the reading order of Big Shot Mystery, there's a novella of Sloan. Yeah. Okay, yeah. is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. No, there's another one that she's written about after. It's now like, it's after the last book in the Brew series, but uh -huh. Garrett and Sloan go off and visit another brewery. Together. Oh, wow. And I think okay. it picks up their romance. I haven't started it yet, but I've bought it. So. Mm. All right. Yeah. Um. I love this question. It says, does anyone actually make the recipes that are in Cozy's? Courtney, 100%. Courtney has videos. videos <laughs> on it. Yeah. And it's yes. great. Yeah, yeah, I call it cooking with Cozy's. And yeah. so I, love it. I, um, I go through and I pick random recipes out of the Cozy Mysteries that I read. And I make the recipes and tell you if they're any good. Yes, yeah. she does. And they are so fun to watch. I cannot cook or bake a lick. And I love <laughs> those videos. They are so yeah. much, they're, they're, they're a process to make yeah. because, like, the cook, like, baking a cake takes multiple hours. So it's mm -hmm. a lot of footage, but I don't have a lot of them. But I do plan on picking them back up this yeah. summer before baby number two comes mm -hmm. and making some more. Yeah. But I am a drink fiend. So the idea of like a tea shop having like 20 to 30 flavors like this one did. Yes. I'm yes. Obsessed. Because yeah. we just got a Dutch Bros in my area. I think it's an Arizona, Utah thing. Uh -huh. And they have all these different sodas and lemonades. And I just, I oh, love I would have like a tea shop with like 20, 30 different flavors. Oh, yeah. 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 Anytime there's like a, um, a will of tea. Ooh. Oh, not, we don't have that here. Yeah, so like they've got like a ton of tea flavors, and then you can go in and like specialty blend your tea mixes together. Like you I can talk that. to someone, and then they'll mm -hmm. like walk you through all of them, mm -hmm. and they'll make you fresh teas like Everly's store. But then they'll also like let you purchase like in bulk your own tea mixture. Ooh, that's fun. Yeah, yeah, that is fun. Um, as far as other videos too, Spencer has a video where she talks about 
cozy mysteries for romance readers right yeah yeah of course i'm drawing a blank on all of them that i recommend <laughs> except the bibliophile mystery series is standing yeah. out to me as one with romance um, um as in the characters are not together they meet in the story and you kind of see their relationship blossom as it goes on so that's one of my favorite ones because there's a lot of love triangle tropes in cozy mm -hmm. sometimes yeah, which sometimes most of the time that drives me crazy but if it's done well i'm like okay that's fine but um this was one that is not a triangle so you can actually like rest assured um that they are going to get together and he's it is he integral to the plot? Like, I feel like he helps her a lot. Because there are some cozies where mm -hmm. the author is like, or excuse mm -hmm. me, the sleuth is like married or whatever. And they're just kind yeah. of a side character. Um, this, he's actually, I think, in involved a little bit more. Yeah, in the first book, when we're introduced to him, he's like very a part of the mystery. Like, the yeah. Story. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, I would say... Have you guys ever read The Secret Book? Of I, it's on right? my TBR, and I know yeah. it's good, but the I have read it yet. romance in this one, um, it's another Ellery Adams, but I will tell you that, like, it got me, like, oh. Like, Maybe, really? Yes. Like, I, like, it wasn't, like, in detail. Like, it was, like, a cracked door romance. Like, mm -hmm. it wasn't all open door, but it was, like, I was, like, oh. That's Ellery. more than you usually get. Yeah. <laughs> I was, like. I was like, it you're stepping feels more decadent because we don't usually get that in oh, our yes, sure. Like my For pulse sure. went up, and I was like, like looking around, like making sure like Alex was not watching me, like while <laughs> I was reading. Alex is like my almost two year old son because then that would make me feel awkward. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, this one's really really good, and it does start. Nora is our main character, and she starts her own bookshop in a small town, and her love interest is. Um, someone who it makes sense why he's in the picture i don't want to like spoil it for anyone if they want to pick it up but this is the first one in the series the secret okay so it's funny that you say that because i actually have been seeing a book going around i had to look it up for the title um that's a, it's like it's flopped as in it's a romance my killer like, yes yeah. by tessa <laughs> bailey i haven't read it yet but i thought of that i'm like oh this is going to be a real good gateway for romance for yes. us to get into cozy mysteries because tessa bailey is a romance author who does like cute spicy books and mm -hmm. this is supposed to be like a fun murder mystery because the hair yeah. the main character it's is described an as a cozy mystery romance this oh, is, is it yes Ooh. seeing a door okay mystery so, uh, yeah, so I was so intrigued by this book because normally, yeah. like you said, cozy mysteries have a hint of romance. This is a romance with a hint of cozy mystery. So it is split. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, Lacey was reading this book. We were on the plane together and she was reading this, mm -hmm. the book on the plane and she said she mm -hmm. really liked it. So I was like, okay, interesting. interesting. Yeah. I've been picking up a little bit more romances lately. Like I, I binge listened to book lover and I only have 10 minutes left in, um, Oh, what's the next one of Emily Henry? It was the- People my, We Meet on Vacation? Yes, or I'm, Beach I have 10, okay. yeah, I've got 10 minutes left of People We Meet on Vacation, and then I have Beach Read next, so I guess oh, I'm I love have Beach to add. Read so much. Like, mm -hmm. I, uh, she has no right writing that well. I don't appreciate it. <laughs> I don't yeah. appreciate, like, falling for these characters so much that my yeah. heart breaks, and I oh, sob. Yeah. Like, if you love- her writing and the style of their romance you should check out the flat share by i think beth, beth o'leary, o'leary. Beth o'leary. Oh, so it's not super it's what you would consider like a slow burn it's not like a smutty book or anything but mm -hmm. i feel like if you enjoy um the writing for em oops emily henry and Million like how percent. her characters get together i really enjoyed that book i know we're going off kilter but i don't we care both, I we all love romance and cozy so. to i don't usually like contemporary books or mm -hmm. women's fiction books like i yeah. don't rotate towards them at all but i did yeah. love the flat share i yeah. did love that it one. was so cute i was not expecting it I was not expecting to love it as much as I did. I think I liked it because it reminded me, I don't read women's fiction nowadays either, but I did at one point mm -hmm. when the romance community was not as prep, like before social media, basically, but like yeah. Marion Keys, like that author and like the bridge, I hate to say Bridget Jones, cause that's so cliche, but like that mm -hmm. style, mm -hmm. this reminded me of that, 
but better. I think it's a lot more modern. I think the I think the concept of the storyline is so novel that um, it that's really what drew me into it. So I I'm pretty well, sure. I can't. Like it. <laughs> Somebody yeah. talked to another cozy Jen Mick. Ken Lay's Library Lover Mystery mm. Series also has a sweet romance. I've never read one of her books. So. I haven't either. Should. It's really good. We read uh, the <laughs> first one. Um, books can be deceiving in that yeah, yeah, yeah. for my book club. And yeah. it was a hit. It was so oh, good. Okay. So, I'm going to have to write that down. Yeah. I'm going to have to read that one too. Now I have all these recommendations like bouncing around in my head. Like, I have all Same. these tabs open. <laughs> yeah. If you're not walking away from this with at least like two books added to your TBR, we didn't do our jobs. <laughs> yes. A lot of people have uh, Killer Vacation um, on their TBR. I know there was a lot of like drama with the cover and stuff, but I'm still very excited for this book. Oh, was there? Don't tell me what it is. I don't want to read it for myself. <laughs> I think it was messy. It was messy. Yeah. Oh, I see. There's two versions. Okay, I don't want to look anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, the version you'll probably get is the red one, the like the red cover. Yeah, and I'm looking, and there's also like an another version that looks a little amateur. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like an eighth grader drew it. It's with the curly font or the yes. font called curls. I like that one, guys. That was the original one. <laughs> No, are you talking about like the one with like the blue beachy background? Yeah, that's the uh, that's the old one, right? Yeah, that's Wait. the old one. Okay, I liked that cover, but you like that one better. Not not that cover cover so long, but it does look like something one of my middle schoolers would have drawn for me. <laughs> there, it's just different. That one definitely has more of a indie romance um, style to it, mm -hmm. just based on mm -hmm. what I've seen with um, freelance. Uh, graphic designers and there's nothing wrong with it I just know that the other one with the pink has been going around so that's I assume was the original that went to, to I play. like the original one <laughs> <laughs> I was so bummed when they switched it but like I said there was drama for it so but I'm excited for um that book a lot yeah I'm yeah excited. same because I do same. like Dr. Bailey's romances in general yeah, I haven't read any of her romances <sighs> I so I have two of her books no three of her books I have a few of her books and I actually, I I heard that It Happened One Summer was super popular and I I was turned off from reading it because by, this is not a popular opinion, but I don't love the show Shit's Creek and that's what it was compared to. So I'm like, oh, oh, I'm going to stay away. And I've so then the second it. one came up. Yeah. I mean, it's really popular and you know, if you like it, great. But then the second one came out and I'm like, okay, well with romances, even if they're series, you they like you don't have to read the first one. So I started listening to an audiobook. I I I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a DNF for me <laughs> because oh, I yeah. just yeah, I just that's another book club discussion. It's not hitting me and like everyone loves it and I'm just like is it me like of course every time everybody am loves I a book I'm like is it is it <laughs> am I the drama am I the villain oh, I'm pretty yeah. sure I am so anyway yeah yeah I, no I feel you uh but apparently it's gonna be a movie that's fast that is so fast that is very fast came out just recently so yeah. anyway yeah well, that's good then. Good for romance because you know what I feel like that happens a that happens most with it happened a lot with YA, like because of Twilight, like there was a bunch of movies mm -hmm. being turned into from books. And it's about time romance gets their due because I think, it, you know what, I feel like it's because the hating game did so well. Oh, they probably sure. want to like continue that. And there's nothing I'm like, yeah, let's do that. I would love cozy mysteries to become more than Hallmark movies. I, I was just mm. thinking that. imagine a TV series as a cozy mystery. Like yeah. season is like. Yeah. The mystery, uh, mystery. Oh, yeah, would be so yeah. Good. it would be so, so good because not that I don't love the Hallmark movies, I've binge watched yeah. all mm -hmm. of the cozy mm -hmm. mystery Hallmark movies, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they make them almost too precious. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. they take out some of more of like the emotion that some of our cozy authors have actually mm -hmm. put into their characters. Mm -hmm. Some of the characters, I like I said, I sobbed. At mm -hmm. the end of that series with Ellery Adams, and it seems mm -hmm. like the Hallmark Channel kind of perfect. They keep it warm and fuzzies. Yes, yeah. and while I understand that that's their jam and that's how mm -hmm. they go, I feel like 
cozy mysteries deserve like a real movie or like mm-hmm. net Netflix doing their show or Hulu mm-hmm. or something mm-hmm. that yeah. like yeah, I agree. Well, I mean, almost all Cozy Mysteries are like 5, 10, 20 books. So I just think like an actual TV series mm-hmm. that in whatever town it's being sent mm-hmm. around. Like, can you just imagine Tort like as a TV uh, series? That's what I, that's the one that I was going to recommend. Because, because if you're thinking, oh, if you're thinking about like how TV shows have like their central location, like yes. that's the perfect location for you to like reset every episode. You've got mm-hmm. your your workers and you learn who the people of the town are because yep. they go it's in like and out. Diner. Yes. Or, yes. I was say, yes. Like yes. more of girl vibes, but like totally yes. Yes. Totally. Yes. totally. Yeah. 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 I need it. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like this generation's murder shoot. Oh uh, yes. yes. Uh, totally. Totally. I, uh, <laughs> I love it. I do for it needs to be like a theme park. It needs to be a show. It just needs to be everything. Like I yeah. love, I love. I know. I'm like, I need to just take a trip, a trip down to Ashland now that I live semi close, which is still like, I don't know, four hours. I know. <laughs> but Aaron I'm like, and I had been- planned on dry or had planned on taking a vacation up there to see Ellie, and then I was like, well, I'm pregnant with baby number two. We're gonna have to wait a little bit longer <laughs> to to go and see her. I was very yeah. sad because, like, Ugh. if you guys don't know about Tort, everything that's in the baker's shop, like, is it's real. Ashland, like, it's real. is is the whole is her whole main yeah. street. Yeah. Like, it's awesome. amazing. I saw yeah. an Instagram reel that Ellie did, and like, she was showing the movie theater and the cobblestone. Yes, floor. It's like, oh, that is it awesome. exists. It's so precious. Yeah, I'm like, I definitely, and it warms my heart to know that places like that exist. And that mm-hmm. makes it even more impressive how she is able to write such realistic, I mean, that probably is why the book resonates so well, because it's, they just seem so, like, real, mm-hmm. <laughs> because they are real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. So- Oh, so there are some like series and stuff, but yeah, those are like movie uh, series, yeah. though, right? Like, yeah, you want to like yeah. Netflix or Hulu or ABC, like that type of thing. Yeah, and I feel like if it was compressed down, instead of being a movie that's multiple movies, if it was more compressed down to like forty-five minutes, you'd mm-hmm. you'd you'd get like a little taste of everything and be able to have like an eight-part season yeah. or something like that. Yeah. yeah, like six episodes, seven episodes, like that mm-hmm. would be really good. I agree. Netflix, pick it up. <laughs> only right? we ruled the world. Oh god. <laughs> if, if only. <laughs> All right. So what is everybody reading right now? Since we kind of already talked about the book and our rating and how we felt oh. about it. What are you guys reading right now? I I actually so I have 10 minutes left of people we meet on vacation. Mm. Um and then <laughs> I was right there. Yeah, I have it right here because I have all of her books right here. (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, uh, what else am I reading? I haven't, like, because I finished this book in two days. I haven't actually picked up, like, another book for for me to Mm -hmm. read. I did just get finished reading um, uh, The Big Over Easy. Have you guys Mm -hmm. ever heard of that? It is. No. Okay. It is. (laughs) It is the, it um, it's hilarious. Hold on. Uh, the big, it's so basically it's like nursery crime division. Interesting. And it's like a almost, um, I would say like mystery, dark kind of mystery. Oh, it, like, it's part oh, of the air affair. Yeah. I've heard of this yes. series. And it's all about Humpty Dumpty's murder. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I literally died laughing this whole entire <laughs> book. Like I couldn't put it down. Every time I, I was like, "And husband, the three pigs are wanted for homicide," and he's like, "That's he's hilarious." Not. He's not. <laughs> and I'm just like, "And it gets better," and he's just like, "Go away." Go away. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Somebody else is reading Emily Henry. They're reading Beach Read. That's oh, I hope you love it. <laughs> solid read. Love that. Um, someone's reading a romance, Fool Me Once by Ashley Winston. Ooh. It's contemporary. It sounds contemporary. I've never read that author. Um, they're reading a good book by Tam- Tamara Berry. It's a historic romance. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Cool, cool, cool. What did you say you were reading, Spencer? I'm not. I'm I'm looking at what other people are reading. Oh, House of Sky and Breath. I'm never going to finish that book. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> 
Um, I am currently, what am I reading? I am, let me see. It's an audio book. You know what? It's probably like another in-depth book and I really need to stop because I'm coming up. I'm almost caught up. I swear it's just like, the, it's my version of when you binge watch Law & Order on TV because oh, yeah. there's nothing oh. else on. Oh, yeah. Um, but I'm actually going to pick up something different. I've got like four different cozy mysteries saved on audiobook that I'm dabbling with. Yes, um, let's see. Little Bookshop of Murder. I started list like, and I mean like literally only two minutes. Last Pen Standing, which is a stationary shop mystery. Mm -hmm. To Helvetica and back, which is. I want to read to, Hel to Helvetica and back. Yeah, I <laughs> bought the book and then it's also available on audio on script and i'm like oh let me try it out and yeah so i haven't really nailed anything down yet so we'll see <laughs> i stumbled upon i think it was your video Courtney. it was an old video like recommendation like on the side and i was like oh what is this i think it was like cozy mysteries on kent unlimited something like yeah, that probably it's it's Deja Brew by Natalie Summers. Yes. Oh. Yes. I think that's you I found that from. So, yeah. I want to read that one really bad. That's my next one, probably. You have to tell me what you think. I will. I'll, I'll message you. Um, Eyes on Me by Sarah Kate. Ashton, tell me what you think, Ashton, when you're done. I love that series so much. I cannot wait for the third book. Um, Let's see. Oh, I wrote very good things about this yeah. book. Jessica from Peaceful Books loves this historical romance. Oh. You guys are reading some good books. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm actually, so it's weird because I was on a romance kick for a while. And mm -hmm. I mean, as as we all do, kind of like ebb and flow. And I think that this cozy that we just read kind of kicked me back into cozies because I'm always like you know whatever and so I really want to find a like a cozy that I can I can stick with since I have like 50 samples on my kindle but yeah. then I've also been seeing a lot of really interesting thrillers and I love thrillers but weirdly enough it's been a while since I've read one I don't know mm -hmm. I don't maybe it's just because I haven't been like the right mindset but now I'm like you know I could really probably sink my teeth into something a little gruesome but either way I think that the next book that I read is going to have some kind of murder in it <laughs> because you know that's really what I'm feeling. I want you to read. Hold on. I, the actual name of it is is gone. It's gone from. <laughs> that's that's always, that always happens. <laughs> I do not read thrillers. Cozy Mysteries is as thriller e. I, I know. <laughs> I am scared. Oh my god! I'm the biggest scaredy cat of life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I read this one because someone recommended it to me. Hold on. I think was you it a read thriller? It was a yeah, it's a thriller. Wow. <laughs> I think it's considered a thriller. <laughs> I love it's it. I, I'm on the edge of my seat. I am too. By John Mars. Have you read that what one? What is it? The Passengers by John Mars. No. I have not read it, but I know of it. Okay, okay, okay. It is set okay, okay. It is set in a futuristic world where um, everything is like electronic and very techy. Mm -hmm. So every okay. single car is driverless. It's all cars that drive themselves. They don't even have a steering wheel. I've so, heard of this book. It's on my TBR. It, it, so basically what ends up happening is this group ends up hacking into seven of these driverless yes. cars and trapping okay. them in the car. Mm -hmm. And basically tells them like at the end of this, you will all crash and you will all die except one of you. So you basically need to like fight for your life and the mm -hmm. public will choose like mm -hmm. who's going to survive basically. And you follow these seven characters and like every single chapter is a cliffhanger. Like all of their secrets and their lies and just like- I like it. I like every it too. chapter ends in a cliffhanger and then you go to someone else's point of view. And uh. you have to wait to get back to their point yeah, of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you listen to it, I mean, if you read it, you have to listen to the audiobook. It is fantastic. Uh -huh. And then Ooh. it goes into this one, the one by John Mars. It's okay. the same. They're a series. They're kind of in the same world. Okay. The one is interesting if you like romance because basically it's in a world where soulmates are a thing. And this mm -hmm. person has created like a DNA test. To oh, does it come on their wrist? Yep. Mm -hmm, to match you with your soulmate. Yeah, you I like know that one a blood sample and it matches Very black mirror <laughs> physical DNA like match. Yeah. 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 It's interesting because again, it follows different characters and one mm -hmm. of the characters is a serial killer and he matches. With <gasps> yeah. 
I want to read that. <laughs> other characters are married and they just wanted like the validation that they're soulmates and they're mm -hmm. not. It's like they get matched with someone else. It is so. It's okay. So, so do you have to read the passengers to read the one or are they just separate? They're just in the same world. They're in the same universe, that same like futuristic style uh -huh. universe, but they're okay. not correlated. Like you can read okay. them. All. You can read them by themselves. Uh, I have to read that one. I already know that the passengers is all my TBR because as soon as you said it and I looked it up, I'm like, oh, that looks familiar. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm adding the one because that both of those sound very Black Mirror, just yeah. like futuristic. What would happen? And I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I read those two, and I I can't look at you. <laughs> those are so good. I were those your gateway thrillers? <laughs> right. <laughs> So next time we talk, you'll probably have read like the darkest like Nordic noir book because you started <laughs> off here. And they're like, hey guys, guess what? I just finished oh. reading. You're like adding oh, it to my list. Right. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's so funny. All right. So I we're about to hit an hour. I had so much fun talking to you guys. Yeah, thank you. Guys for always asking. Time flies. Yes. <laughs> oh, thank you. Especially I know you guys are busy mamas. So thanks for joining me here. Yes, I'm, I'm surprised you haven't heard Alex screaming, Mama! He's legit, like, in the living room. That's a background just, noise to me nowadays. So yeah, I'm just like, no, you're huh? good. What? Did someone say something? I love that. So <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys for all your recommendations. Make sure to follow Courtney. She also has a Cozy Mystery Book Club. So follow yes. her channel if you want to read more cozies. And then Spencer and I will pick our fall book pick sometime. I don't know when. <laughs> Before fall, but Before long fall. enough to give you guys a long time to know about the book and last minute to read it because that's what we all do. Let's be honest. Literally. <laughs> exactly. so our next one, because this is a seasonal book club, our next one will be towards like fall. So like August, October. Yes. Is Plenty of time. No yeah. Pressure. Yep. All right. Clubs every month. Yes. <laughs> if yes. you want to read cozy every month. Yes. I Who love doesn't? it. It's a newsletter too. It's, it's great. It's you great. have a newsletter? Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. I sent you like a whole like list of like all of the characters in the book mm -hmm. and then That's like their description. Right. And then I send like uh 10 discussion questions just so people can like I remember love it. Like that. if they read You're it at the so beginning organized. of the month. Yeah. And then <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Have to chat. I gotta take notes from you because I'm clearly a wing it by the seat of your pants kind of <laughs> I did that for years with the book club. And then finally I was like, I should probably know more about what I'm talking about instead of just saying, hey, that one person, and then expecting yeah. people to read my mind. You know, I mean, do we <laughs> that's so because me and Spencer were like, this person, the mistress, <laughs> we had the actual names. <laughs> Nope. It's like you guys know, right? The person right? Like, that I did the like, murder. I just expect people to read my mind and just be like, "Yeah, Courtney yeah. so knows what she's talking yeah. about." Did she really read the book? Like, oh yeah, my God. I so do, guys. I promise. <laughs> you want even more cozies? Follow her book club because it is so good, so good. good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll talk to you guys later. Let me end the broadcast. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>